You did that all the time. You'd walk around with your weird walk and massage your boobs. <laughs> and Jordan I'm like, I just walk on the weird. inside of her feet. Oh, shut up. And then her knees like hit together. So that's why you'll never boobs. see people. I'm like, wow, I think I love this person. Yay Networks. Hey guys, welcome to our first ever podcast, Together Mess. This is our very first episode. Jeff and I are so excited to do this. If you don't know me, my name is Jordan Lloyd. And my name is Jeff Schroeder, and our podcast is called Together Mess. Sometimes Jordan's accent, being from the South, makes it say like Together Miss. We don't miss each other. We're <laughs> messy with each other. And he's my husband, if you don't know. And, <laughs> and he's we're happily ki- married. We're very happily married, and no, we're not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this is great. We're going to talk all about family on here. Obviously, a lot of people do know us from reality TV. Actually, on this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about how we actually got casted on Big Brother. So that's how we're going to kick things off. But for people that don't know us. This is good just to fill everybody in for the ones that don't know us. And so are we going to start with how we got casted? Yeah, let's start with that. So for our first episode, I think it's fitting that we talk a a little bit about our reality life and how we actually met on a reality TV show. Because I feel like a lot of people know us from Showmance. What you you mentioned Showmance, and I remember uh, when we were auditioning, I asked my brother's friend Barry. Yeah, Do you remember this story? Yeah, you told me. And I, you have to fill out like this super long thing, all these questions and stuff. And we'll get into the psycho. There's a psychiatrist that you go through once you get on the show. There's so many behind the scenes stuff, but we'll fill you, fill you in on that stuff later. But the showman's thing, I remember my brother's friend goes, I go, Hey, what do, what's a reason? Like I want to be on the show. And he was a fan of big brother. And he goes, dude, say you want to get in the showman's. And I started laughing. I'm like, what's a showman's? And he's like a romance on a show. I'm like, Oh my God, that's hilarious. I'm like, I'm going to write that down. And I wrote that on my audition, even though I didn't like was looking for a showman's. I just wrote that because I thought it was funny word. I'm like, showman's, that'll be funny. And now we're married. Wasn't that crazy? Because we weren't trying a showman's because we didn't know. I what know, a show- but that's why but it's I funny feel to like me. it now on shows. It's that's the thing. Ever, that's the thing because they get more pop, more Instagram followers. Uh, or like The Bachelor. Yeah. That's why I think they never work out because it's like, let me become a influencer right after I get out with a million followers and get to m- model all this stuff. And yeah. But when I got off of Big Brother the first time, you won. So you didn't get to sing the blues with Julie at the end. But I remember people being like, hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? When I walked out and I remember in my head, I was like, I, went, I think I would... I was a waiter with that guy when I lived in LA and someone's like, Hey Jeff. And I was like, Oh my God, I think I went to college with that person in Illinois. What are they doing here? I didn't even realize Julie had to tell me at a commercial break. She's like, I'm like, she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, I feel like I went to college with that guy back there. And she's like, Jeff, these people watched you all summer on big brother. And I was like, what? I had no idea being in that bubble for three months. Cause I didn't watch the show. So having the showman's like, it was not like, Oh, everyone's going to, love us and we're going to get popular when the show ends i had no idea anyone was watching so when people were like jeff they watch me it didn't click till like i was out of the house but that's i think what's so great because it's just genuine yeah and i i feel like everybody does that uh, for i'll give a, an example i was super pregnant with lawson and i Remember when I just wanted ice cream, I kind of went through a phase. I think I was like seven months pregnant, and I really wanted ice cream, and we would go to Brentwood Farms. Chicken salad you want. Oh, I love chicken salad. But uh, (laughs) where I'm going at with this is Brentwood Farms. Remember that creamery, that ice cream place? I would go there, and I made my brother. Okay, so it's it was probably how many miles from our house? Four? Four miles? Maybe, yeah. And I made my brother walk with me there because I wanted it so bad. And what like I sto- said, hang on, just this? listen. And I was super pregnant. And I see this guy and I'm like, I know him. I'm like, do I know him from so where do I know him from? He's from Charlotte. It was Ben Affleck. And he was with his kids in his car. And I was standing right there stuffing my face with ice cream. And he was at like waiting to go. And he was with his kids. And I was like the whole time, I'm like, how do I know that guy? And here I am like 
was all. What does that have to do with me us being on Big Brother? Because you're talking about, oh, I know that guy. Do I know that guy from college? And I'm but like, I didn't know that guy. Yeah, but I'm just, I don't know Ben Affleck. <laughs> well, obviously. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you do that. Whenever you see somebody that, like, they see you on TV, you're, like. But they knew me. I don't know. Whatever, Jeff. This is how the podcast is going to go. Yeah. FYI. Okay. So <laughs> do you, I'll go first. I'll start first. Um, I was 22 years old. I was working three jobs and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I thought I always wanted to be a dental hygienist and my dad's friend let me work for him as an intern. And then I realized People don't brush their teeth. And I got pretty grossed out. And I was like, you know what? It's important. I don't want to do this for a living. And I'm so appreciative that my dad's friend let me do an apprentice. But anyways, so um, I worked at a hair salon. I bartended. And by the way, I was the worst bartender ever. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I worked at a bowling alley. And one night, this lady, I was working um, and Bonnie approached me. I love Bonnie. I always give her credit to everything because I always tell her I would not meet, I would have never met you and my life wouldn't be where it's at if it wasn't for her. But she approached me, asked me if I ever thought about doing reality television. And she said she was there casting for this show, Big Brother. I had never thought about doing reality TV before. Um, didn't never even saw Big Brother. And uh, she told me to meet her at this place called Cans. That's where they were doing an open casting call. And I didn't show up. She called me a couple days later and was like, I have not found anybody. Will you please meet me at the Hilton downtown? So I had my brother go with me just in case it wasn't legit. Because I was like, what if this is like a lie and they like try to kill me? I watched like all this Dateline and things like that. So my brother goes with me and, um, and then I just kept making it, you know, when you don't want something and you don't care if you get it, you get it. Absolutely. And I think that's why I was just like, who cares? I don't care about being on a reality show. My mom, I told her, I go, this lady approached me about doing this reality show. My mom's like, absolutely not. You will not do a reality show whatsoever. Because around that time, it was Rock of Love was popular. It was kind of Flavor Flav, um, things like that. So my mom didn't know what Big Brother was. So she's like, what is this? That's but I'll let you, I know I talk a lot. No. You'll get to know that, but yeah, I want you to be definitely. able to explain how you got on and then we'll go from there. The crazy thing was Big Brother was popular. So we, our first season was season 11. So it was very popular at the time, but ironically enough, I didn't know what Big Brother was. So I'll, I'll make this a long story short type of thing. One of my ex-girlfriends who we broke up very mutually, um, I used to do, I moved to California when I was like 23 or 24 years old to try to be an actor. And I ended up being a waiter. And I was like, this isn't what I want for my life. You know what I mean? I was out there for a couple of years and I decided to move back. And when I moved back to Chicago, I actually got more auditions because they thought I was an actor from LA. So they're like, you lived in LA and really? you were an actor? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, oh wow, you must be good. I'm like, <laughs> let's try it out no you're not that good <laughs> so but I did get a lot more auditions that's how I met Lindsay who we'll get into later on but that being said I did little auditions around town and my ex-girlfriend remembered that because I brought her to a couple castings and she's like hey Jeff she called me and we we broke up very mutually remained friends and she's like Jeff will you help me out with this audition the show Big Brother's coming to town and you should try out too and I was like yeah, that sounds great. Let's meet up. And I really thought we were meeting up for a beer, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, we did meet up for a beer, but I thought that's all it was. I didn't think anything was going to come from this Big Brother casting. So we're sitting down having a beer, and I was like, I don't even, what is this show? What do I say when I go in the audition room? And she's like, just say you like this guy named Dan. And for those Big Brother fans out there, you'll know who Dan is. He was on season 10. If you watch Big Brother, he's like yeah, the godfather so of Big good. Brother, right? One of the best ever play. And, uh, so I'm like, okay, she just, she goes, he's a football coach. You played football, just kind of make that work. And I was like, perfect. So I went in there and said that, you know, and uh, they keep calling you back, right? And eventually they fly you to Los Angeles. That's why I'm going to make this long story short before it gets too long. But they fly you to Los Angeles, right? And uh, on the plane right there, I was like, oh, cool. I get the free trip to see my friends and stuff. That's what I was thinking in my head. And I was like, man, I feel bad that I lied to, per to the producers saying like, 
you know, this guy, Dan and all that stuff that, mm-hmm. so I felt, I felt bad for some reason I came clean. Cause they ask you a million questions they do. and they're like, so why do you like Dan so much? And I was like, dude, I don't know who Dan is. I'm like, I came here. I told them the story that I just told you guys. And, uh, and I remember them saying like, Jeff, we like you. You got to watch the show, just not for us, but if you're on the show, you'll have a better idea, idea of what's going on. So go home and watch it. And I did. And I watched all the episodes and they called me and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to be ready this time when they come because I watched a bunch of episodes and seasons and I know what's happening now. And that's actually when I got on the show. So I thought I, I thought I was like going to be prepared for an audition, but that's when they give you the key. Mm -hmm. And again, if you guys don't watch the big brother show, that's when you officially get on the show. And for those of you who do watch the show, that is you exactly really have like two hours to pack your stuff and get ready yeah. and go. And when I got my key, because they kept telling me, make sure you're what Bonnie kept saying, make sure you're watching episodes so you know what's going on. And I was like, yeah, 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 I watched some. And then no, it was like more so I put it on and then it was like skim 10 minutes. Okay, skip or I'm bored with that. And then I would just keep skipping stuff. So when they gave me my key, I was like, oh, thanks. And then they were like, I go, what does this mean? And they're like, you're on the show. And I go, well, they're like, okay, we got to retake that. We need you to act excited. They and retook so mine too. Mine, I sound so annoying. I'm like, yay, I'm going to be on Big Brother. <laughs> and I sound like so whiny and annoying. And yeah. It's super cheesy. Like it's very again, cheesy. A, 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 I'm sure a lot of Big Brother people are listening, but it's the cheesiest part of the show, but it's the part of the show right when it starts that you make your first judgment yeah, about who everybody is. Exactly. And it's so awkward when you're filming that first scene because, again, at this point, you don't know that you're on. At least I didn't. I had it. I'm like, they wouldn't be filming this unless I was on, right? In my head, and then when they finally gave me the key, my brother gave it to me, and I was like, so what's up? Am I on the show? And he's like, yeah, I think so. They gave me this. And then they're like, guys, you're gonna have to do that again. <laughs> like we were playing football. <laughs> so then officially they take your phone. Um, you, sh- I mean, I might've had a couple things packed away, but not officially, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then, um, I remember this is so random, but there's little things that stick out to you. Um, the day that I got picked up to leave, um, Michael Jackson had died. And when your handler picks you up to take you, they try to shield you from the news, from anything, so you don't know what's going on. Who are you talking to? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just like looking at the. Oh. <laughs> and uh, sorry. Michael Jackson had died, and your handler. We have handler, some producers in the room in case we don't cut that. Yeah. And Jordan just started. She strikes up conversations with inanimate, inanimate objects. Shut up. <laughs> Why do you say that word? No, I just started, I don't know. I just started talking and started looking. Okay. You don't know what word I'm trying to say? No, I Inanimate. don't. Inanimate. Let me, unanimous? <laughs> no. What? <laughs> Inanimate. Okay, let me finish. Is that the right word? It sounds like I'm saying it wrong. Don't ask me. I'm an idiot. Um, But, so Michael Jackson had died. <laughs> no, I started she, talking off camera. So Michael Jackson had died and we're walking through the airport and they're trying to hide it from me and it's on every single television oh yeah uh, in the airport and i was like you don't even worry about it i know he died all right guys we're going to take a quick little break to introduce you to a new product that really has made our lives easier all right guys i don't know if you remember but we worked with a company called hello fresh in the past, and now we're working with Green Chef, another great company that's owned by HelloFresh. And I love to cook fish. Jordan doesn't like it so much, but I love it. And they got great proteins, including turkey, but I'm more of a sockeyed salmon guy, barramundi, tilapia, shrimp, scallops, they have it all. It's all sustainably sourced seafood. That's my favorite thing to eat. I try to keep in shape, and the one way I do it is from great seafood. So a lot of you are probably wondering, what is Green Chef? Green Chef is a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every lifestyle. For me, I hate cooking, so I love having this right at my fingertips. Yeah, and if you're on the go like we are most of the time, this is a great meal kit company. So whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or you're just looking to eat more of a balanced diet, 
This is the perfect company. Green Chef offers a range of recipes to suit your particular preference. Jeff loves his seafood, me not so much, but what's so great about Green Chef, there's something for everyone. You can eat clean the easy way with recipes that help manage your weight and support your wellness goals without skimping on flavor. Another great thing I love about Green Chef is it gets the whole family involved. Our kids are six and four. They like to get in there and get their hands dirty, even though their mother doesn't. But they make it so easy. They include pre-measured sauces, spices, dressings, and it's delivered right to your door, quick and easy. Love, there's no excuses. You're going to have to start cooking pretty soon. I know. I have no excuses with this. And it's easy. I love easy. I need anything that takes no time and it's already prepped for me. So if you want the number one meal kit for eating well, go to greenchef.com slash togethermess50 and use code togethermess50 to get 50% off plus free shipping. You can't beat that. So I'm going to repeat this again so y'all hear it. It's greenchef.com slash togethermess50 and use code togethermess50 to get 50% off and free shipping. So then you get, <laughs> you get picked. I think the worst part about everything is sequester. So after you get, after so what you get, we're talking about, you go to the airport that day. My day was the day after. So I went, you went one day before me mm -hmm. into what we call sequester. And you're in sequester for about two weeks, a, a week, week and, and a half. half. Yeah, a week Something and a half. Something like that. Eight to 10 days. I don't know how much, I don't work for CBS anymore. So I don't know how much inside scoop we're given. But, but the only yeah. thing you look forward to well, they take your TV out. They take everything out. So you, you're you just in your room, and you're not allowed to leave your room. So you could watch. They literally put tape on the door. So so they know if you left. Right. So you like the tape will break like yeah. if you open the door. So they literally give you, and at the time, this is how long ago this was. They gave you like a little disc player to watch movies. Yeah. So you could watch whatever movie you wanted, right? And Old Seasons of Big Brother, which... I did watch, I watched a couple other seasons of Big Brother while I was in there, but it gets, it's genius in a way because after whatever, seven to 10 days, whatever you're in there, you cannot wait to, to talk, talk to people. And see somebody. Even the people who are dropping off your food, you're like, hey, what's up? You want to come in for a second, yeah. right? You like want to be their friend. Yeah. And then, um, so then when you, you're about to move in the house. Wait, real quick story about the first time we were on. Okay. I remember being in there and I was getting pretty lonely and it was 4th of July. I remember that because we were in Studio City. Remember that hotel? Mm -hmm. Like, I forgot the name. It's a Hyatt over there yeah. if you're ever Sorry. in that area. But I remember I was looking out and I could see fireworks all over. And I think they gave me a glass of wine. They usually don't give you drinks yeah. or anything but i think we we're going in maybe the next day or something they gave me a glass of wine and i put on the gladiator soundtrack and i just like started crying i'm like i don't <laughs> know man is this, this is gonna be my big break or i don't know i don't know i got emotional i'm very emotional you'll find that out later too Jordan's see i wasn't thinking about Austin. any of that i was well, listen, I'm Stone Cold Steve Austin now because <laughs> I deal with the kids all the time and my antidepressants make me like, don't, I just don't cry. All right, we'll get into all that later. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stick to Big Brother right now. So go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off there. So that's, I remember that moment looking out the window and seeing all the fireworks. And now every 4th of July you when I see fireworks, that. I think of that moment with the Gladiator soundtrack playing in the back. But let's move on to the day we the, go we, there. You go there. So we're on stage. House. We're on stage. Actually, yeah, wait. I let know me, where you're going to go now. Wait, let me say I this. It was funny. Allison mm -hmm. is one of the executive producers of Big Brother. And like I told y'all, I didn't watch Big Brother. Well, I Allison's like, are you ready? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, when are we going to the house? And she's like, you're here. And I was like, what do you mean? We're not going to a house? I thought we were going to like a house up in the mountains. She goes, no, the Big Brother house is on the lot. I remember being so confused, like, oh. We're talking about a studio lot, not a studio apartment. Oh, yeah, not a yeah, studio apartment. Because I'm sorry. I didn't know that either. And I was like, wait, the, I thought it was a house that they just rigged up 
with cameras. That, me too. But literally, it's on, literally, what's wrong with my words today? It's on CBS's lot. Yeah. The lot's called Radford, Radford and Studio City. And uh, it's on there. I forgot what stage it is. But I, I didn't know that either until we got there. I was mm-hmm. like, wow. And then when you walk on stage... I just remember the lights, how bright it was. And I was like, whoa, this is like way too bright. And then uh, when Julie was called, was, you know, we were all talking and I was so scared because I was like, is Julie, what happens now? Is Julie going to quiz me on something? And I was freaking out. And then I think you and I went in the house together. We were the last group. I was the last, we were the last group. And I remember I was the last person in the house and you were yeah because okay. i go last one in i go first what did i say i said something cute to myself first one in last, last one, one out no but it was last one in last one out but i wasn't the last one but you know you what i mean close. i said something positive to myself yeah i remember that moment okay so we move in the you're house you're just skipping over all these like life marks that i have I'm not skipping over it i've heard these stories i don't know how many times so when was the I last think- time i said that you didn't even know that no it's probably been a while, but I just get like, okay, let's move on to the next thing. No, I think you're just like, you're not listening to me talk. You're kind of just saying, when is it my turn to talk? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So after wait, that landmark. Hang on. And we move, this is what I want to say. We go in the house. Okay. All the so house yes, guests we are, are in there. Oh, okay. I, I know, know where you you're know going. You know where I'm going? Yes. I know exactly where you're going. So we're the last group in. Yes. See Jeff, but I wasn't like, ooh, I like this guy. I actually thought Jeff was old because he had great, he was graying. At, you grayed early in life. And um, and just for, I was 31 you were 31 when we were on that show. And I was 22, so I thought a 31-year-old was old. And um, How old do you know? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, this is how Jeff and I, I felt like bonded. Do you want, actually, do you want, you yeah, tell I'll that tell story. It. I'll tell it. So just for people, again, if you watch or don't watch Big Brother, um, we never went back and watched our season. So we were on two seasons and we never went back and watched them. I watched cute little YouTube clips and things like that. That's when he has a couple whiskeys. I do. It's like a and then he tries sun, to get Saturday emotional. night and I watch these cute, like people make these amazing videos and I'm like. I'm, like I said, I get a little emotional now. So I watched that and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But I never went back and watched the actual season because I don't need to see people. There's a diary room and people talk. Can we swear on here? People talk shit on there. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's right. We could swear. I forgot about that. Try not to if the kids are around. Where was I? So we get in the house, right? So I think there was, I don't even know how many of us, 15 of us let's say, 12, or 13 yeah, of us. Something like that. Okay, whatever. There's 15 of us. And there's 14 beds. They obviously do that on purpose right when you walk in the house. So we're the last ones in. All the beds are taken. There's only three beds left. One of them's a double bed. So we get in our room and there's not a lot of options. And I'm the last one in, like I said. So I get in there and the only bed is some girl that I have never met. It's Michelle, if you guys watch Big Brother. And me and she was married at the time i was single and i'm like wow this is how i'm going to kick this off on this show Mm -hmm. sleeping in the same bed as a married woman this is not a good look right off the bat and i was like oh my god what am i going to do and i obviously you walk in there you don't know anybody i didn't know jordan from i hate that term adam you know what i mean yeah that's a lame term we'll come up with a better one but jordan steps up and she goes you know what, I, maybe you don't feel comfortable sleeping in a bed with a woman. I'll sleep there and you could have my bed. That was, I mean, not even a minute or two being in the house. And right away, I'm like, that's it. She's going to be my friend, at least at that point. Like, I trust her because who would do something like that? I wouldn't. If you, I'd be like, wow, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. So right away, well, I, knew I knew Jordan was a nice person, which, you know. And well. I knew too, I was like, that's not a good look <laughs> but that's, so that's like for you like, to be uncomfortable yourself so sl- with a person that you didn't know says a lot about you right you know so i slept i shared a bed with lydia and i remember being so wasn't scared. it michelle in there yeah but michelle took we all switched 
me and Lydia ended up being in the big bed sleeping together. Oh, okay. Because I remember being like, I don't know this stranger, and I'm sleeping with That's him. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that took, that yeah, was, but it's... It takes a really it's like, a kind diff- heart to do that. Yeah, it's different if it was a married person, single person. It was just... Like, it would be, like, two girlfriends sleeping in the same bed. But I remember being, like, I don't know her. Like, what if I, like, hike my leg on her or roll on her or, like, breathe on her <laughs> something? Which uh, you get to know people pretty quickly yeah. in that house. The first thing when you move in, you're, like, um, who's going to go to the bathroom? And then that goes out the window after day four. You're, like. That was my oddly nobody talks about this when you're on big brother but that was my first thought so there's whatever 15 people in there one bathroom you're like i'm already nervous my stomach stomach's kind of crumbling. yeah but you just go you don't even care yeah, well, and then i feel bad you're not for gonna this. hold it for three months yeah but there is a microphone and a camera in there so i'm a whole time i'd be in there i'm like i feel bad for the sound guy if he's hearing this <laughs> He's probably like, turning the volume down low while we're all shitting. I don't think- <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's something like, if we're going to have probably some big brother people on in the future, and that's, we won't explain it like that. We'll clean it up a little bit. But if that was like one of their first thoughts. Oh, Because yeah. it definitely was mine and yours. And then now me being older, I mean, at 22, I mean, I feel like I, you know, I was a kid and now being 36, and older, I'd be like, oh, I don't yeah, even want to. When you're in, I remember like you walk in on people, they walk in on you, and they're kind of just, they're your roommates at that yeah, point. Yeah, but now it's so I'd weird be like, oh my God, that transformation I just poop, like, yeah, I don't want you to smell it, you know, like, wait, or poopery or something. There was no poopery then. Um, okay, okay so we're, sorry, <laughs> let's get off of poop. Um, yeah, please. So after that, so that's really how we started <clears> bonding. <throat> then in the house, that season was click seasons it was um what was it popular click athlete click um the brains and the i can't even think of the yellow it was yellow the, the outcasts out, right no it wasn't outcasts it, it was wasn't? um the the yellow team it was the yellow team. off beat off beat yeah that's right because you can't say outcasts probably back then you could now now you can't say anything yeah, I know. So watch it. Yeah, you're getting canceled. Um, <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah. It was the offbeat. Yeah, yeah. That season. What were you? I was popular. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, can I go off topic? Always. The, now, this is going to sound kind of dumb. This actually is really dumb when I tell this story. But I wanted my boobs done so bad. Okay, before I worked so hard and saved up my money to get my boobs done. Okay, well, the doctor I went to did them ginormous and I hated them. <laughs> I like, I was like, oh my God, I went from an A to a double D. So I tell the producers, they're like, do you have medical clearance? Are you good? Like, can you do the competitions and everything? And I lied. I was like, oh yeah, I can. Uh, I'm good. Well, I have stitches in still. This is when we first go in the I got, house. Yeah. This was during the process. They When they asked me to go to L.A. in the audition part, they were like, Jordan, um, you know, we're going to fly you out to L.A. And I was like, well, I have my boob appointment. And they were like, well, we need a full commitment from you. And I was like, okay, well, let me see if I can change my appointment. And so I changed my boob appointment so I could go to L.A. And I ended up getting my boobs done right before Big Brother because I was like, I'm never getting on this show. And I don't even care if I'm on it or not. So they were like rock solid hard. I have stitches in my boobs. The first competition, if y'all remember, was um, the diaper where we're holding. You're like a giant undie grunge. Yeah. It was like with the wedgie a or wedgie, something. Yeah. And you're <laughs> holding on. And my, it, <clears throat> no, I mean, I never said anything because I would, didn't want people to know because I didn't know how Big Brother worked. My boobs were on fire. And because the stitches and all here was still sore. And I remember being like, oh my God, if I drop now, like people, which I was terrible at competitions, but they, I, People are going to target me. So I held on as long as I could. And then after, my boobs like stung so bad because of my stitches. And then I got an infection. They, they stunk? Stung. Oh. Stung. I thought you were going and somewhere And then else. I got an infection um, <laughs> on my boob. And 
to this day, I have a scar, a bad scar here. And I remember going to the DR and I didn't tell him I had stitches. And I was like, can I get some Neosporin? And I just rubbed Neosporin on him to try to heal him because I didn't know anything else what to do. Yeah. But if they would have known, and I didn't even <laughs> ask the doctor. I know. I heard. I remember the story. Yeah. Anyways, that. that was like And the whole topic. season, again, keep saying if you watch Big Brother, you massaged your boobs the whole season because that's what the doctors told you to do. So if you watch Big Brother and you watch those live feeds, <laughs> Jordan's just massaging her boobs for three months. Yeah. You did that all the time. You'd walk around with your weird walk and massage your boobs. <laughs> that's what People that's you, all the time <laughs> ask me, are your foot hurt? What happened? And Jordan I'm like, walks I just walked on the weird. inside of her feet. Oh, shut up. And then her knees like hit together. So that's why you'll never boobs. see people. I'm like, wow, I think I love this person. No, you don't. <laughs> no, let's get into that. The a doctor bit. told me that if you didn't massage them, they were going to get rock you say hard. That, now, it's and then funny. now I want mine taken out. Isn't that funny? Now I'm like, I hate them. I want to be flat chested. Time changes everything. All right, guys, we're going to take another quick break before we wrap things up. Stick around for more Together Mess. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life's not always perfect. Sometimes it gets messy, right? Of course. That's why we came up with this podcast, Together Miss. But there is a time that really stands out to me. It was back in 2016 after I had Lawson. I had really bad postpartum depression. Um, just, I had no idea what was going on. Being able to talk to someone and have them coach me through what was going on and help me understand my feelings and how I was feeling because I felt like I was in this hole that I couldn't get out of. I think the first step was talking to somebody, right? Because the more you talked about what you were going through and being honest, as well as me being honest of what I thought you were going through, the quicker we got to the bottom of what was going on and then we finally figured out that it was postpartum depression. So if you at home are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. I think it's great because it's convenient, it's flexible, it's suited to your schedule. And it's all online. And it is. It's all online. And I love that you're in the comfort of your own home speaking to someone. For me, when I was going through my postpartum, I didn't want to go to someone's office and talk to them. I would have been better at doing this online if I knew about it then. Right, so all you gotta do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you know what I really love about this? You could switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So if it's not working out for you and you don't think this is the right fit, you could switch no charge. And that's really important is finding somebody that you are super comfortable with that you feel like you can share everything to, all your secrets to. Kind of like you and me. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TogetherMiss today and you get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TogetherMiss. But it's funny, like, I'm glad we're doing this podcast. I hope people like it. But it's sparking, like, so many memories walking through, like, step by step because it's not memories that I think about all the time, you know, right. but it's kind of cool. Like taking that trip down. Well, something memory lane, just like the boot that like that pop. That's the first thing I remember. Of, and then like, I the picture you walking around the yard. No, I'm not saying that. Eating I'm cookie not, dough. I didn't say that. No, that, I meant eating cookie dough. <laughs> that's later on. That's another that's thing. That's later on. Oh, yeah. But let's talk, where should we go from here? Cause we could talk big brother all yeah, day. We don't want to make this all about big brother, but we do want to fill people in a little bit behind the scenes and kind of our thinking as much well, as we can how, remember from that's that. That's really how ago. we connected was with the beds. Then you, Jeff, um, your alliance or team, your athletes team didn't like you and they couldn't get you out. And then that's kind of how you and I bonded. I was like, this guy's cool. You Oh, there's a good story that we could roll to. Like, so the bed thing was, you know, one. And then me and Jordan always just joked around or cut up as she likes to say. Yeah. I never used that word until I met you. And I'm, I don't know why I use it right now. But we'd always be joking around and stuff. And then like Jordan said, my team hated me, but they kept winning and they couldn't get me out, right? Again, this is going from my memory. So big brother friends be like, no, you did this. Yeah. And you remember, like, so yeah. I'm just kind of jumping around here. But there was one moment, we were in the recycling room 
I remember that. And everybody hated me. And I was like really coming down on myself and I was a positive person. I still, I try to be. And I was like, wow, I'm a, I thought I was cool like all these years. And it turns out I'm a big loser. You're not interested in this story? What's up? You checking your phone? No, our kids are outside playing by themselves with the neighbors. And I'm, it's a neighbor texting me. So I'm making sure our kids are safe. I'm in the middle of a heart. I was about to cry. Okay, go. Keep going. But anyways, Jordan goes, uh, I was in there feeling bad for myself. And I'm like, listen, you better get away from me because the game's all about having social game and things like that. I'm like, you better get away from me. They're going to get me out pretty soon. I don't want, you're so nice to me and I don't want you to screw up your game for me, you know? So you should probably keep your distance, even though I really like you as a friend, you know? And she goes, I don't care if I leave here. I'd rather be your friend and I was like, oh, man, it was something went down. I don't know the exact words, but it was a sweet. I mean, it was sweet Your at the time. Your nostrils are getting bigger. Are you getting emotional right I, now? Because it was, it was cute. And again, I couldn't believe that you would do that for me, you know? And I was like, all right, that's it. I'm going to try my hardest for both of us. And for the rest of the time in this house, which you're supposed to backstab and lie and big brother and do all these things, I'm like, I will never cross you. I'm like, you... You, I'll promise you that you it's me and you till the end, no matter what happens. And, uh, it was, I kept my promise and I did too. And you and made, we made were, it to the end. Um, yeah. So that's really how we started. And then after the show, we, um, it was, it was we were still friends. Everybody was pushing like, Oh, are they dating? We were, we weren't dating out of the house. Right. I think Jeff had, we a, did go to that CBS party. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing because we'll we both got hammered. You just get out of the Big Brother house, okay? Three months locked in. Then you're in a party. Where are you going with this? I'm not going to go all the way. What are you saying? <laughs> you take it from well, me. Well, you're going there. I wasn't going anywhere. Well, now you like left it like that, and people are like, what's going on at that party? <laughs> That was like the first night we had sex. Well, there you go. There That's go. what I was going to say. I didn't know. I didn't want you to say it. I didn't want to make you feel And I remember I called my, I remember I woke up the next day. I can't believe I'm sharing this. Um, I woke up the next day and I was like, oh my God, I just had sex. I had sex with him. And then I called my mom and my you mom. You waited three months though. No, I didn't sleep around at all. You, no, 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 no. I'm saying like people, that's probably a question. Jeff people is have, only the second person I've ever slept with. I was always weird about catching an STD or like getting pregnant. So I never slept around. Ever. But here's the, th so we're getting pretty personal here. Or, well, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> You're but getting what, uncomfortable. No, I'm not getting uncomfortable. My mom's listening probably. No, but. My uh, dad. My yeah, dad's, dad's probably like, <laughs> <laughs> but people probably wondered you know a lot of people ask me do you have sex like in the house or you fool around oh, we never had sex in the we house never had yeah sex. we never had sex in the no. house we did two days after <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we're married and then it's healthy and then um yeah like i said i called my mom and i was like mom you're never gonna believe this and she was like what and she goes you had sex with jeff i go i did and then she goes did you like it and i was like i guess from what i remember <laughs> and then she's like uh <laughs> um and then it kind of made things comfortable right well we were we super really comfortable, comfortable with each other we were super comfortable three months in that big brother house i'm not even kidding is like dating a year at least right you're together every single day doing every single thing together, but having sex. Some people do have sex in there, but I never, I, I would never just because I would never want to embarrass my family. Yeah. Cause exactly. like stuff like that. Is, <laughs> you mean uh, like we're doing right now? Okay. So that's just a little bit of <laughs> how we met <laughs> a little bit of how we met. You got a little bit of a uh, sex talk in there. Which I know people. Listen, love. we're just keeping it real. Listen, yeah. we could tell these stories all day about reality television, but we do want to bring in our life. Right? Our life, and we want to talk about other things. Like Jeff is obsessed with Vanderpump. We're going to talk about that. You said reality. Yeah, I know. Um, but anyways, where <laughs> was? Oh, I have to tell you all this though before we go. Um, how we got the podcast name together, mess. And now I'm now I feel self conscious. Now I feel like I have to say mess because like good. I know especially in the first episode or two. Then you could then kick in your say whatever accent. Jeff said. Yeah, okay, yeah. Keep going. But for the people that don't know, there's a million podcasts out there. So thank you for listening if you're listening. But to come up with a name is a lot more difficult oh. than you think. And 
I like to brainstorm. I like to come up with things. And I thought I came up with some really clever ones. Turns out a lot of them were taken. I even plugged in like a lot of details into the new AI generator. AI generator, is that what it is? I don't know. I don't you know. put something in there, podcast name for Jeff and Jordan, and it spits out like 500 names if you want. Not one of those worked. Nothing felt and like fitting. Guess what did work? <laughs> I, um, I, people are going to think like I have a drinking problem. I don't have a drinking problem. Um, I was drunk first one all, night. This is the first time you're talking about drinking. Oh, actually, the second time. The second time. You might have a drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, go ahead. So I'm drinking, and Jeff and I are sitting on the couch, and we're like, okay, what? what's the name? And I was drunk, and I said, together, mess. And then Jeff said, hey, I kind of like that. And I was like, I do too. But so here's he just the thing. wrote it I down. I wrote it down in my phone. And I forgot about it because we were drunk. <laughs> and the next day, we were talking to the producers who are in the room here. And I'm like, I was rattling off some names. And I go, and Together Mess. I was like, Together Mess? What's that from? And it was from And it was the from weekend. that weekend. And then I told Jeff, we kept going through all the names. We narrowed it down to like seven. And I go, Together Mess, I feel like just fits us because we're not messy. I don't mean like mess, like dirty, but we're no, just a life no. just is life just isn't perfect. Nothing's perfect. We're not organized. We're kind of go with the flow type people. For sure. And we're messy. Yeah. That's the perfect. And it, I was like, it just fits. It fits us. And uh, yeah. Messy in life. What made you think of that? Why did you even remember I saying I that? I get smarter when I'm drunk. I'm telling you, I do. I say that all the time. I feel like because I'm not thinking too much that I just like say things <laughs> and then I feel like I just like get smarter. I could take this in so many directions. I'm going to let that one sit for the first podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave it alone. All right, so how does it feel to be back? Feels good. I know a lot of you asked us, I don't know how many times would write me in the private messages, when's YouTube coming back? When's YouTube coming back? And we didn't have time, and now it's official. So now we have the podcast. It's our first podcast in the books. You feel good about it? Yeah, I like it. I hope we didn't bore you guys. I hope... Uh, <laughs> you got some information. <laughs> and if you did like it, make sure you hit like on there. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, you could follow us at... Mine's BB Jordan Lloyd. Mine is Jeff Schroeder 23. And, and we'll have it down at the bottom so you all can see um, the names of our social handles. Yeah, just follow us on any of these. But if you're listening, Jordan still has my name in her phone as BB Jeff. She hasn't changed it yet. You can't tell anybody that. Then people will know it's you if somebody ever got in my phone. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>